This is week three of our four-week mini-series on Linden Camp Excavation. Weeks one and two are listed down below, and I suggest you watch those first. Week one was clearing the trees. Week two was doing some excavation dirt work. And this and week three, we're going to be covering the, the finish work, I call it, from the excavation perspective. Uh, when I say finish work, I'm talking about uh, laser leveling build sites, laser leveling RV sites, putting some chert down in the driveway, making the, um, the driveway surface packed hard and uh, so it has proper drainage. And that's what we're gonna be covering today. Uh, week four is also linked down in the description. And there's an entire playlist on the entire construction process also linked down below in the playlist that I suggest that you watch as well. So at this point, we've completed uh, four days of construction that have occurred over two weeks. There was a week before, and the weekend, and then two more days the next week, and then we were into uh, Easter break. So the guys uh, took a vacation. I think they left on Wednesday or maybe Thursday, uh, went away for some rest and relaxation, and then uh, came back on uh, April 19th was, was when they returned uh, to my site. I'm not sure when they actually got back from vacation, but that's here nor there. So we're going to continue the video here on uh, on April 9th. It's our, our fifth um, construct excavation day. One of the things I wanted to do was um, do some, some test rounds of the turnaround area. So I fired the RV up, put the drone in the, in the air, as you can see here, and, and uh, took some laps. And uh, here we are, we're speeding up in editing room, so it looks like I'm driving faster. I'm not really driving that fast because I'm going like super slow, not wanting to hit another tree. So there's some footage of uh, you know me doing that, doing the rounds, and it was I can I can make it in my rig. My rig turns pretty tight. It's got a, a pretty small turning radius, but I didn't know if all rigs would be able to do that. So. I decided that you know when the guys came back, I wanted to you know expand and make you know make the turnaround area a little bit bigger. So that's uh, that's what you see going on here. We also wanted to build up the driveway some more. We hauled some more chert in, and then the area between the new driveway and the old logging path, there was some cut through areas there for you know pull through sites. So those needed to be smoothed out and charted yet. And um, I also wanted to have some area cleared since they were working back there to the South Finger so I could access some more of that, that property. So some more trees. I thought we were all done with removing trees, but we removed eight more trees towards the center of the property. So let's, uh, let's go and watch some of that video from back in April. Hi, this is Comet Troy. It is April 19th. 2022 when I woke this morning it was freezing I know it was freezing because my automatic awning in my RV automatically rolled in it does that if it gets below freezing if the wind gets over a certain wind speed or if the batteries are discharged if the batteries get below 11 volts the awning will come in automatically now we've had kind of a, a weird week this last week it's been a lot of rain a lot of overcast clouds kind of uh, kind of weather. My solar generator hasn't been working that well. It's freezing right now. It's like 35 degrees as I record this. It was 32 this morning when I woke up. But here's the good news. It's going to be in the mid 80s and sunny by the weekend. Can you believe it? That's awesome. I can't wait. Just wait for that video and I'll be talking about how damn hot it is <laughs> and how I can't stand being in my my ranger outfit anymore let me just stop the video right there here today on on july 23rd 2022 it was a hundred degrees that's not like feels like a hundred it was actually a hundred degrees and feels like 150 or something like that with 81 percent humidity but i'm not complaining so let's go back to the video Well, I was hoping to get this little bush when it was in full bloom. It's already lost half of its leaves. 
but I thought I'd take a picture of it anyway. When I had the excavators come in here, I told them that this was all a creative work in progress type of thing and, you know, use your judgment. If there's, if there's things that you see that would be nice if you were staying at this campground, then, you know, make some adjustments and tweaks. So this is actually campsite number nine overlooking the holler over there and the dozer guy uh, decided to keep this bush. I didn't ask him to do that. I'm like, I told the guys, I'm like, you know what, if there's if there's a tree or something that, you know, might be kind of neat to have, well then leave it. And, you know, we can always take it out later. You can't put it back in once we cut it down or rip it out. Uh, newsflash, I've since found out since I recorded that beautiful bush that that might be an, that might actually be an invasive tree from China called <laughs> none other the uh, tree of heaven. I think it might be a tree of heaven. I still have to do some more investigation but if that's the case that's an invasive tree that doesn't belong here and it literally makes tens of thousands of seeds a year and it will take over the whole forest and kill all the other trees and this and that. So I think that that bush that looks so beautiful might be uh, out of here after all. I still have to investigate because there's um, some other trees that have a similar kind of uh, leaf structure, a black walnut, um, some sage weed or musk weed or something too that are native to the area. So I have to you know, do some investigation to see if that uh, tree really belongs. So here we are expanding the size of the turnaround area for the big rigs. We're making it around 95 to 100 feet. There was three trees that had to be taken out here. So the bulldozer is taking out the three trees on the turnaround and pushing them back into the north finger so they're out of the way and then I'm going to cut them up for firewood later. So the dozer operator uh, had to take a personal day today so that didn't stop the work. The father uh, Melvin Swarry hopped in the bulldozer and operated it while his uh, son was tending to his personal business and from the looks at it uh, Melvin he still he still got it so very pleased that it didn't impact the schedule and, and work proceeded as, as, uh, as normal. I'm walking over to the South Finger right now and I had the dozer guy come back and push over five trees back here. One's over there by the witchery tree. Give him com some company. And then four more back here. I haven't been able to drive down this path because there are some, some trees that were right in the way. So once I get these cut up and cleared, I should have a nice uh, path to get quite a bit further back to my property. I'm going to cut these up with my, chain my new chainsaw and make firewood out of them. So I've got a lot, of, a lot of firewood now, about eight trees. So here's some more trees I had cut down or pushed down today with the dozer. More firewood. And then once I get these out of the way, I'll be able to uh, drive quite a ways back. So this is what I'll have to deal with. There's a couple little trees down there I'm gonna have to trim on the right, but I'll be able to uh, hopefully get through there. So here we are at day six, and day six was just a half a day. There was some loose ends to be tied up, a little more grading to be done, and um, the machines actually, the bulldozers actually went over to the other property, uh, lot 36, to smooth out some of the dump loads of dirt over there. So there was just you know a few hours here on site at, uh, at Linden Camp to finish up the job. I just want to do a huge shout out to um, you know Melvin Swarry and his three sons and Swarry Excavating. They did an awesome job and I highly recommend them for any of your excavation needs and I, I couldn't be happier. 
Now, there's a few reasons why I highly recommend uh, Melvin and his his uh, his sons and his and his company. And when I had them come on site, we didn't really have a plan. I just told them that I wanted to build an RV site by the road. I didn't really know how long I was going to get them. I didn't know if I was going to get them for a day, two days, you know, a week, you know, whatever. So I kind of went into it without um, really too many expectations as far as, you know, what I was going to get done. And a lot of it, you know, it's, there's a cliche in the in the corporate world that, you know, we're going to like get this plane in the air and we're going to build it in flight. So that's exactly what we did here at Linden Camp. You know, I wanted the RV site and I made a lot of changes and it's like, hey, what if we did this? What if we did that? Leave that berm there. Can you sculpt around it? We were going to try to have the, um, the shop and the apartment and the office all at the same level and not have the two foot drop. So we decided we were gonna do that. We were gonna you know, bring in and, and build up the shop area. And then we're like, well, you know, the shop is gonna be above the road then. So and it, it, it wasn't gonna work out. So then we made another change to drop it back down. And, and you know, it was uh, several changes and everything was done with a smile. And uh, the communication was great. And there was a tree I wanted taken down, the witchery tree. And I was standing back there by it. The dozer was close and I made eye contact and I just uh, looked at the, the dozer operator and I went like this. I went and pointed to the tree and, and pushed it into the woods. And literally 10 seconds later, that tree was down and pushed it into the woods. It was amazing you know, the amount of communication that I experienced with this company. And, um, you know, one of the things, just a, a general thing I'd like to say too, and I think this is kind of more for the landowners that are going to hire a contractor. I think you should have an idea in your head of, you know, what you want the contractors to do. And then you should maybe um, also have some little pet projects that, you know, you'd like to do as well that aren't necessarily a requirement of the job. But there's times when, you know, like the skid loader operator might be waiting for a load of chert to be delivered. So you can take that time and, you know, ask the skid steer operator, hey, could you go move some stumps for me? You know, carry them from there over, over and dump them in the woods. Can you, you know, spread this dirt around? And can you do this? Can you do that? And, you know, I had the dozer guy come over and knock down some trees in my south finger. That wasn't part of the original plan at all but it was something that I decided that, uh, you know, the airplane in flight thing. So worked out real well. Um, the guys did a great job with a smile on their face. And I think we really were on the same page a lot with this project and I, I couldn't be happier. Now, a lot of people ask me, you know, what things cost. Now I'm not going to um, disclose exactly what uh, Swarry charged me or any of that. I'm going to talk in generalities just to help others out. Um, typically you'll, you know, you'll find these machines anywhere from a hundred to $175, $200 an hour that come with an operator. So skid steers are, are typically, or the smaller machines are typically less money. You know, usually in the $125, $150, $100 an hour range, you know, the bulldozers and, and backhoes are, are typically, you know, on the higher end of that. So you can pretty much figure out, you know, how much it's going to cost by just, you know, figuring you know, anywhere from, you know, $1,300, $1,500, $1,600 a day per machine. So if you got three guys on site, you know, you're looking at, you know, probably forty-five to five thousand dollars a day. And if you have a, a two-man crew, then you know you're probably looking at uh, twenty-five hundred dollars a day, three thousand dollars a day, thirty-three hundred, right in that range. And then, of course, you know, a one-man crew is twelve hundred, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars, right in that range, depending upon what what the equipment is. So that is uh, typically what you'll see for, for excavator charges out there. And, uh, you know, multiply that out. I mean, you can see, you know, how much work that we did here in, um, you know, five and a half days. 
and chert is another expense that you can count on. Um, I've seen chert ranging from $175 a dump truck to $300 a dump truck. So you have to you know, bring that in to spread that out to make your driveway surface. So just a little bit of insight into the, the costing because I, I get asked that um, quite a bit. So a lot done there, week three, you know, week one, two, and three, we cleared the trees, we did some dirt work, we've laser leveled our V pads, we've got our driveways done, really happy with the way the things turned out. Uh, stick around for week four, where we're going to be talking about uh, septic systems, building another build site for an outbuilding, and a path down into the hollers, where I made a, a rustic campsite, if you will, a rustic picnic area. I'm not really sure what it's going to be yet, but stick around for uh, week four. If you found this video entertaining, enlightening, helpful, like, subscribe, ring the bell, leave some comments. That's what keeps us motivated to keep making videos, and we appreciate your support. And I will see you in week four.